And uh, we are still talking about uh, the rescue and relief efforts now uh, being undertaken in the typhoon hit areas in Central Philippines. And uh, speaking of uh, relief efforts, yesterday we had the opportunity to join, uh, join the armed forces of the Philippines, in particular the, uh, the men and women of the 31st Mechanized uh, Company, uh, or, uh, the, which is part of the Mechanized Infantry Division based in Camp O'Donnell in Capas, Tarlac. No? We were in Tarlac and uh, they, were, uh, they were giving as part of their Yuletide uh, uh, outreach project, the armed forces, with the Tarlac Heritage Foundation. They, they were giving um, uh, food and other stuff that were grown inside military camps, okay? So th those are actually soldiers uh, that you're seeing now. They're entertaining the uh, victims, not of uh, Yolanda, but uh, of Typhoon Santi, which hit. I mean, uh, we're, everyone's talking about Yolanda, no? so we've, we've forgotten that a month before, Santi, Typhoon Santi hit. And these people in the, these uh, far-flung, they're, they're far-flung communities because we, we had to go there using military six by six. No, this is Barangay Mayang La Paz and Barangay uh, Kabuluan in Victoria. No? So these are pretty far, far out areas. And they were given, uh, they were given uh, catfish, basically, hito, that was raised inside the, uh, the, uh, uh, the military camps. No? So th this is sort of an outreach of the armed forces of the Philippines. And uh, we were with uh, Lieutenant General Greg Katapang, who is uh, commander of the Northern Luzon Command, and also of uh, Dr. Isabel Cojuanco Suntay, who is the chairperson of the uh, Tarlac Heritage Foundation. So, okay? All right. Okay, so that's... Uh, so, I guess a lot of people are really going out of their way, no? not, not just... Uh, uh, traditional charity organizations, but even the soldiers have realized that they have another job, which is to help people uh, that were whose lives were devastated by by natural uh, calamities. Okay, and uh, we have with us also someone who who knows a lot about uh, calamities and uh, spends a lot of time preparing for them. Uh, we, we we called you so, some sort of a, uh, we, we addressed you as a doomsday prepper, but uh, let's not go into the the super worst case scenario of doomsday. No? But uh, a super typhoon in a relatively small area that it, it hits is practically doomsday for the barangays or the townspeople there. No? And uh, Nino... Uh, you've been you've been going around giving lectures on how to how to prepare for for uh, this sort of thing. So tell us about your work. Oh yes, actually, I've I give a lot of lectures about about disaster preparedness, just the basics. Mm -hmm. um, what I start is just like I said for the basics for people, and the basics is just pretty much setting up a a go bag or a bug out bag. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Naalala ko, uh, Nino, no? before yung, yung the concept of doomsday prepping, parang sinasabi medyo far out, eh, no? medyo yung, yung, yung planning no? or paranoid yung tao. But after Yolanda hit, uh, and the, the, the worst nightmare of a lot of people came true. Their houses were destroyed, everything they owned. And these were not all poor people. No? So some of them were middle class, some of them were professionals. But... After that, uh, th that moment, wala nang bahay, wala nang damit, wala nang pera, no nothing. Yep. You go to the store, wala yung store. You go to the pharmacy, wala na rin yung pharmacy. And the uh, chaos sets in. Looting happens. Government, you call government, wala, walang cell sites, wala na rin yung city hall, pati yung mayor, pati yung mga barangay. Uh, yung iba, patay daw. Uh, yung, yung iba, nasa lanta rin, so they have their own problems at home. Uh, so, so government infrastructure was torn asunder. You go to the police station. Uh, I think uh, initially, uh, mga 20 cops lang responded because uh, the, the other cops became victims themselves. No? So how do you prepare for this? Actually, what you do is you actually, re you actually rely on yourself rather than the government. Uh, what you do is you set up a, what you do is you set up a bag. And, well, first you do is you set up a, 
disaster supply kit list of the, of the, of the necessities that you need to survive um, for a three or four day scenario if you have to leave your house. Okay. The best choice is actually in a situation, best is to stay home if you can and so you have your own, your own food and supplies. But if not, if you have to leave, then you have a bag ready to go with supplies, with basically just food and water and other, and other goods that you can live off until, until, help, until help arrives. You know, I, I saw on TV that you're supposed to have at least three days w worth of food and, uh, and uh, potable water drink available uh, at any time in your house. But what happened in Tacloban, ang nangyayari sa Tacloban ngayon, hindi lang three days, bali wala yung three days, we're going into several weeks, no? But the, the, the basic social, uh, the, the government infrastructure, the business infrastructure is only beginning to very slowly creep back in. So uh, 72 hours supply, bali wala yun. Yes, 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 that's actually true. Yeah, um, right now, most of the bags are actually made for 72 hours and also some places it's, it's actually for 96 hours. Mm -hmm. um, what the bug out bag was really actually meant for is if you can leave before the disaster and, and and go out before it happens actually happens so that gives you time to go to a safe place and if, if uh, like I said if you if that'll give you time to go to a safe place so rather 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 being in in the disaster mm -hmm. and in that bag alone will will give you supplies that you need to live on such as food water and what you can do is you can actually ration ration that much food and water to actually survive for a week mm -hmm. you've been going around giving lectures no? so ito mga lectures na to, uh, I think maraming tao naging interesado, they're talking to you, they want you to lecture to them uh, because uh, Yolanda or Heian, uh, Typh Hurricane Heian, was uh, essentially a wake-up call for everyone. It's no longer weird to be a prepper because it happens. Climate change is here it's, and it's wreaking havoc. I guess it's, the, it's something that we, uh, to a large extent, did to ourselves. We were warned 30 years ago that things were going on, that the, 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 the things we were dumping into the atmosphere was going to come back and bite us, and it has. Okay? So we, we have to live with that. Kailangan masanay na tayo dito sa, sa pagbabago sa klima, sa climate change. No? So uh, with Ondoy four years ago and uh, Yolanda now, uh, y yung old school typhoons is nothing. No? Mas grabe na. So, so what are the basic things? Uh, what do you teach your, your, uh, those who attend your lectures? Actually, the first thing I do is, uh, for the people that attend my lecture, I, I teach them a basic disaster preparedness, just very, very simple stuff. First thing is just to get a good backpack. It doesn't have to be fancy, a regular mm -hmm. school bag. I also teach them um, also to have the basics, the basics, such as water and food ready. So a person needs to have at least three to four liters of drinking water a day to survive. That's the minimal per person. And then you need food. Of course, you have to eat. And then also, once you have to leave... What kind of food uh, lasts long and is sort of, uh, can be transported uh, without spoiling? So um, canned goods. Yeah, easy open canned goods. Yes, yes. Canned goods are really good. Easy open canned goods are good. Uh, actually, if you have canned goods, I rec of course, you've got to have a can opener. If not, buy the canned goods that actually can easily open with, with the flip top. Mm -hmm. um, also, food that is in the little uh, in the sachet packs, instant mm -hmm. like the beans. Mm -hmm. um, there's also sardines because canned food weighs a lot. So you have that in your backpack. It actually weighs. Actually, water weighs a lot in your in your bag. I think like one liter of water can weigh up to like one or two kilos, and you have and you need at least minimal two or three of you, water in your bag. You have a list here. Uh, are you gonna take us through that later? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. I am. Um, so, so what else do you need? You have food, water, uh, do you need a knife or something? Yes, you actually need tools, but also with water, so you, you can only carry so much water. You can only carry so much water in your bag. So uh, what you need to do, you need to have a filtration system for your, for your water, um, if you're able to get more water, more drinking water in the future, so you can have That's a water filtration. Straw. This is a life straw. And this is for an uh, individual. Um, also, too, is another, uh, another inexpensive one is an aqua tab. Uh, this costs about six peso a pill, and one pill does about 20 liters of water, mm -hmm. so it'll, so it'll purify it. So th this is generic, no? It's, it's yeah, yeah. Actually, you can buy this at else at a at a, what's it called? Generic drugs. Mm -hmm. So this uh, one box is about 600 pesos, but you can buy it per piece. Because when the when the water system breaks down, uh, it's invaded by a lot of. 
bacteria and stuff. And the like problem is, is most people, you can only live, you, you can only live uh, around three days without water. So that's the first, first thing I tell everyone. Okay, uh, from, a, uh, from a texter, this is from Tina of Marikina, who, who uh, this is addressed to Miss Judy. Miss Judy, my family would like to send donations in kind through Suchi. Uh, do you accept donations in kind? Where can we get in touch with you? Actually, they can send it to um, ACNO, 76 ACNO Street, or they can send it to our uh, complex in Santa Mesa. It used to be the um, Sisters of Mary complex. It's in Luberan. Uh -huh. So, anyway, I understand. Um, Buddhism sort of teaches us uh, to, to, to be sort of at one with nature, if, uh, if I understand correctly. Yes. And uh, the climate change is, is, a, is, a, is the effect of us not being one with nature, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is the reason the Dhamma Master keeps on telling us to become vegetarian. Uh -huh. because you know, when I was in high school during the 80s, everyone was saying the ozone layer, oh, God, the, the climate change. No, no one really took it seriously. I mean, we had typhoons regularly. Uh, were you here during the 80s and the 90s? Probably you, you, you weren't, no? No, I weren't. Uh, but, but typhoons is something that we even welcome because uh, no classes. No classes. <laughs> but uh, these kind of typhoons that uh, we're experiencing is different. Mm -hmm. It really scares the hell out of everyone. Yeah. Because it, it, it blew not only the small the shanties, no? it's, uh, yeah. we have concrete structures being blown and uh, torn down by a 300 kilometer per hour typhoon. Yeah. No? All right. So mm -hmm. it seems that uh, a, a lot of people really want to do their bit. No? And a lot of those who are donating are not rich people. No? They're just yeah. middle class people or uh, maybe, uh, uh, who have to work uh, yeah. a long day like the rest of us. Yeah. But they. But they, I guess, realize that they're still better off than those people there. Yeah. We, during calamities, we, we see people with kind hearts, really. We, we, we saw people coming to the, uh, uh, the affected area, uh, open up their trunks, and inside there is a big plangana with the ice, ice, uh, ice something, no? But it's water. So, in effect, they're just helping each other. So, so how, how do you deal with the deluge of people uh, all rushing to, to, to get supplies, almost practically tearing it off your trucks? Because uh, it becomes a sur survival of the fittest situation. Y uh, a few people will benefit the strongest, the fastest, the most aggressive will get, get the stuff, while those who are maybe sickly or, uh, or starving already do not have the energy to do that. So how do okay. you... Make that, it an equitable di distribution. Yeah, that is a very good question. The Truji Foundation, what we do is that we do home visit. We have the name list from the barangay. Kahit sira we, na yung bahay. Okay. Uh -oh, we, we, we usually do home visit and we have a coupon for them. We will tell them on which day, what time, we, where we will be and ask them to go. Go there and we are prepared for them. At least there won't be any chaos.